Let's take a look at factoring a quadratic leading coefficient of 1. First of all, we have to understand what factoring means. This is a quadratic because it's got a power of 2. So any mathematical expression with a, with a, a squared term in it, that's considered a quadratic. So that's what that means. Factoring, you can kind of think of that as sort of like unfoiling. So what does that mean? Well, if we start out with something like this, say for instance a, an x plus 2 times an x plus 3, and if we were to FOIL that, what's that give us? It gives us an x squared, and then we've got a 3x and a 2x, which makes a 5x and a, and a 6. So look at that. That's a quadratic. So if we're going this direction, we FOIL. But if we're going to start with a quadratic and move backwards, that's called factoring. So it's kind of like unfoiling. This direction is called foiling, and that direction is called factoring. So what that means is our answer is going to look like this. It's going to look like two binomials. And we know that the first term the first position in each of those has to equal the w squared. Well, that's an easy one. There's only, it can only be w and w, right? That's what this is explaining right here. We know for sure it has to be w times w. However, the last term right here, this one times this one, the last term, that's got to give a negative 18. And we don't know for sure what that is. It could be, it could be um, 1 and 18, or 2 and 9, 3 and 6, lots of different variations. And we've also got to keep, in tra uh, keep track of the sign. So if we use this pattern right here, and we say, all right, our, our factoring factored term has to look like this, then we can use a little t-chart to figure out what m and n we need to plug in there to get our, our correct answer. So in other words, what we're doing here is we're looking at what factors of 18, m times n, has to give negative 18, and then they add up because if we look at our outer and our inner, so our outer and our inner will always be like terms, and they're always going to combine, either adding or subtracting. That's where this comes from. So all we have to do is think about what two things multiply to give negative 18, and then add up to give a positive 7. So we can just start checking. Okay, we know that 1 and negative 18 makes negative 18 when we multiply, but when we add them, we get a negative 17. That doesn't fit because we're looking for a positive 7. If we switch those signs, we get a positive 17. That one doesn't work. What else could we try? 2 and negative 9. That gives a negative 7. That's getting close, but it's the wrong sign. If we switch them and say negative 2 and 9, that makes negative 18 when we multiply. And when we add them, we get a positive 7. And what do you know? Bingo. There's our answer. We really don't need to go through any more because we got it. So using this pattern and the, that solution or that set of factors, our final answer is going to be w minus 2 times w plus 9. Now let's always check. Let's just do a quick FOIL to make sure. We get a w squared. And then our outer is a 9w, our inner is a minus 2w, that makes a positive 7w, and then our last is a negative 18. Hey, that's just what we started with, so that checks out, confirms, this is the correct answer. Okay, how about one more? Again, we know that this is going to have to look like two binomials. And because it's got the leading coefficient of 1 here, this secret invisible 1, we know it has to be x and x. 
Now what we don't know is what m and n multiply to give 21, but add to give a positive 10. So let's just check. I'm automatically going to use 3 and 7. Because that's the first thing I think of that makes 21. And when we add them, what do you know? We get 10. Well, that's done. We don't have to go any further. We know automatically it's x plus 3 times x plus 7. All done.